Good morning, everyone. My name's Talia Stevens, and I'm live in the big town of Warrialda this morning. Today, I'll be going over an overview about annual end and stock returns and some of the frequently asked questions. Feel free at any point along the way to jump on, say hi, and let us know where you're tuning in from and ask any questions. Before I get started with the presentation, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. I pay my respects to elders, past, present and emerging. I'll just give a minute for some people to tune in. So the first thing I'll touch on in the overview is who must complete an annual land and stock return. You must complete a return of the annual land and stock if you are a landholder in New South Wales who is liable to pay local land services rates. This means you have a property of 10 hectares or more. Also, if you're a landholder who has land smaller than 10 hectares with a pick, you're required to complete and return the annual land and stock return. For example, if you have a hobby farm or any block of land with horses or any other stock, you require a pick, therefore are required to complete a land and stock return. So we have established that who is responsible for completing these returns and you may ask, what is a return? So the return is a farm census, which goes out yearly to gather information about stock numbers and land use as of the 30th of June each year across New South Wales. This information is then used for a few different reasons, which I will touch on throughout the presentation. When must a return be completed? So as I just mentioned, information on your return must reflect the property as of the 30th of June each year, and this must be returned to local land services no later than the 31st of August. I'll just give it a moment again for anyone else jumping on and for any questions that people may have so far. Um, so why must we complete our annual land and stock return? So there's a few crucial reasons why this is um, important for you to complete and get back to us by the end of August each year. So one of the big ticket items on this list is how the information provided assists us in responding during an emergency or biosecurity event. For example, the recent fires that we experienced throughout the state information from annual land and stock returns was used to access the needs of landholders, allowing us to respond accurately and quickly. The annual land and stock return helps us maintain our clean and green reputation within New South Wales by assisting us in protecting the primary industries of the state. Uh, so the annual land and stock return builds a statewide picture of livestock numbers and agricultural land use. So giving us a look at the state and allowing us to see what's happening where so we can work out how to help different areas of the state as well. Um, it gives us the ability to monitor flocks and herds for emergency animal diseases. For example, if we experienced anything again, like the 2007-2008 equine flu, outbreak, this would allow us to identify who was at risk and who would require our assistance. And we would have the ability to monitor flocks and herds and protect primary industries by keeping domestic and international markets open. Um, so there's a few ways to complete the land and stock return, which we'll go over now. Um, so you can do it on our online portal or by post. So if you choose to submit your return online, 
you will play your part in assisting and reducing contact with paper forms and it'll be beneficial to everyone given the current COVID-19 situation. You'll save on postage and will also save yourself a trip to the post office. You will have the opportunity to build your digital confidence and you will be able to ensure that we definitely get your return by the 31st of August. So to complete it online, the online portal will be open from tomorrow, so the 30th of June. So you'll need to go onto our LLS website and navigate to the annual land and stock return portal or a cheats way to get to this maybe to search in Google, lodge my annual return of land and stock and click on the local land services website in the results when they come up. So on the top right hand corner of the paper copy you'll receive, there's a holding number and a password. So this is what you'll use to log into the annual land and stock return portal. Once you've logged in, you submit all your information and submit it. If your paper copy has the word reprint at the top of it, unfortunately, you will not be able to submit your return online. Um, just a handy tip with all of this is if you complete it online to print yourself a copy for your records and keep that because sometimes if you're applying for funding or anything like that, they need your land and stock return as evidence. And yeah, so if you've got a copy on hand, that'll be very, very useful. Um, alternatively, you can mail the completed hard copy back to LLS at locked bag 6013 in Orange, New South Wales with postcode 2800. Um, so we've just had our first question come in from Wendy and she's asked, what do you need to do if your land is sold? Um, thanks, Wendy, for submitting that one. Um, I will touch on that very shortly in the presentation, so stay tuned and we will cover that one. Okay, so moving on, um, another important reason to return your land and stock return before the 31st of August each year is because of the correlation that this information has between the submission and your rates. So the rates are primarily based on um, the notional carrying capacity of your land and the size of your land. So the stock numbers that you declare on your return won't affect your rates, um, but it helps us determine whether you need to have the animal health levy and the meat industry levy charged on your rates. Um, so these fees are important for things such as our district vets to provide their service. So yeah, if we've got any further questions about this, um, yeah, I'll just give it a moment before I move on. Um, so some people do ask, what if they submit their return late or if they don't submit it at all? So as I've already said that returns are due no later than the 31st of August each year. And the answer to this question about if you submit it late or if you don't submit it or if do you need to submit it, the answer is always yes. Yes. If you've got any questions about why it's yes, you can either ask now or get in contact with us um, at some other point to double check, but the answer is always yes, a return must be completed. Um, so the consequences for submitting your land and stock return late or not submitting it at all. Um, so the animal health charges and the meat industry levy that I mentioned in our previous slide, they will be added to your land rates in the following year, even if it's not applicable to your land meaning even if you don't carry stock. So these, charged, these charges are placed on your rates as a penalty for not fulfilling your requirements as a landholder in New South Wales. So 
Another question about this is, do people need to complete a separate form for each holding? Again, the answer to this one is yes. Every property needs a land and stock return completed. So it's important to remember that if you have more than one property, you're required to complete this return for each. And it's important that the information on each return is correct for each property. So this means don't list all of your stock on one property and then leave any other properties blank. We have to make sure it's accurate. This is because audits are able to be carried out on these returns and ensuring that this information is true and correct is crucial because if we get audited, we don't want to get ourselves into any strife with that one. Um, so we've just had another question come in from Sarah. Um, she's asking if she only has two horses, if she still needs to submit. Um, so we'll touch on this in a little bit further into the presentation. But the short answer to this one so far is yes, but I will elaborate on that in um, a further slide. Um, so the next part to this is how do I identify which stock you should count? So any livestock over the age of six months needs to be inc included on your return. So this is whether they are over whether they're a pet, whether they're for production, if they're yours, if they're being adjusted on your land or if they're on your land under any other arrangement. And the exception to this rule for anything over six months is pigs. So pigs of all ages have to be counted and added to your return. Um, when it comes to poultry, anything of a flock more than 100 has to be added. And the only other thing I'd add to this is um, stock of in, like any intensive livestock doesn't need to be added to the initial section of the stock count. It's added in the intensive section of the um, return, which so there's a separate section for any stock that is listed as intensive. Um, so Jean's just submitted a question. Um, what stock should I count? So I hope this has just covered that one for you, Jean. So all the stock that's listed on our screen at the moment um, has to be counted. Pigs of all ages and anything of more than 100 um, poultry. So if you check your details on your return, this is a good opportunity to make sure that they are correct and up to date. Um, so if they are incorrect or need updating, you can visit the LLS website and use the change of details form, or you can contact your local LLS office and get assistance in updating these from us. So if you complete your return online, you'll have the opportunity to update it um, as you go. And then that's fed through to us. Um, also, but we're just wanting people to be aware if you're submitting your return manually, so filling out the paper form and sending that back to us, that if you mark any changes on it, they won't be picked up. So we strongly encourage don't mark any changes on a paper copy and submit it because these are scanned and sent through to head office we won't be able to account for those changes. So therefore your details won't be updated if you do it that way. Okay, so this is where I'll get back to um, Wendy's question and of like, what do you need to do if your property's sold? So I'll just go over occupancy of the property and then in our next slide, I'll go over if it's being sold or leased. Um, so, if you receive the land and stock return, it's because our records are showing that you're the legal occupier of the property at the time the paper copies were produced for sending to the customers. Um, so whether you're leasing the land, whether you're the owner of the land, it just means our records show that you're legally the occupier of it at that time. So if you weren't the occupier of the property, whether it's all of it or just part of it, on the 30th of June, you can complete a change of details form online to update this information or get in contact with one of your local officers and um, we'll confirm who's responsible for completing that return and we'll be able to look into why our information 
may or may not be correct as at that time. Um, so we've just had another question come in from Lee. How do I identify if I have a pick on my property? Um, so I'm going over some pick stuff um, very soon on this. So stay tuned, Lee, and we will touch base on this one for you. Um, so back to answering Wendy's question um, about whether or not you have sold your land. Um, so if you're in the process of selling your property or implementing a lease arrangement, the land and stock return still has to be completed. Um, so to determine who's responsible for completing this, it's whoever the legal occupier is on the 30th of June. So if you sell the property and you're the legal occupier on the 30th, you're responsible. However, if you buy a property and you're not the legal occupier until the 1st of July, the old owner's responsible. So but if, like always, if you've got any questions, get in contact with us and we can clarify this one for you. So what else do you need to do if you have livestock? So this is where I might be able to answer Sarah's question. So anyone in New South Wales who has livestock on their property is legally obligated to have a property identification code or a PIC. So this is anyone who has horses, livestock as pets or anything like that. So if you've registered livestock on your return and you do not have a PIC, you can complete a PIC application form on the local land services website. So PICs are also important in tracing livestock for the quick response in emergencies and reducing the threat of spreading livestock diseases. And for example, PICs are also used, useful from an operational point of view as they allow you to have stock processed at places such as sale yards or abattoirs. Okay, so to answer your question, Sarah, you still need to submit one because if you've got horses, you require a pick, and if there's any land with a pick, you're liable to complete an annual land and stock return. Um, so I've just had a question from Sandra. Um, could you please run through how you do returns if you're running stock on a MA permit? Um, so Sandra, just jump on and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, are you, I believe you might be talking about the management agreement permits for the TSRs. Um, so if your stock are on the TSR on the 30th of June, they don't need to go on your land and stock returns. It's only stock on your property on that day. So if your stock are on the TSRs on that day, they don't need to be added to the tally of stock for your property. Um, so I hope that helps. If you've got any other questions, Sandra, get in contact with us and um, we'll go into some further depth with that one for you. Um, so Lee's asked, how do I identify if I have a pick on my property? So this is important because if you have stock on your property, you do need a pick. But if you want to identify with your land and stock return whether you have a pick on that property or not, so there's a pick section on there. Um, if it's blank, it means that there's no pick attached to that property. If that section has a pick, it, that will be the pick that's attached to your property. So if you've got more than one property and the pick on the property that you're looking at is wrong, you need to get in contact with us because it may need we may mean we need to amalgamate a pick over that property that you are using. Um, if you are, if you do have stock, get in contact with us and um, we'll sort that out for you. So Lisa's asked another question about her land being raidable and she has a horse and a goat. So to answer your question, Lisa, you do need to lodge your return because these animals require a pick. Um, so if you haven't got a pick, as I just said, get in contact with us or fill out the pick application form online and submit it and we can get that one sorted for you. And because you will have a pick on that land, you will be required to submit that. And I'm hoping I touched on Michelle's question um, just previously about if the pick on your return is not the one you use. So if you, you have more than one property or more than one pick for any reason, and you use that, you only use one of those picks across all of those properties. Um, 
if the ret if the return for one of those properties shows the wrong pick, so the one that you don't use, get in contact with us and we can initiate the pick amalgamation process to get the correct pick across all of your land. Um, so I'm hoping I've answered those questions for everyone. Um, so I'll move on to just our upcoming LLS events, um, giving everyone some time for some more questions to come in if they do have them. Um, so while I wait, I'd like to thank everyone for jumping on today, asking questions and um, engaging in this event. Um, so please jump over to our listed events on our Facebook page to see the great lineup we have scheduled throughout winter. Um, so our next event is a webinar as part of our expert series um, with guest speaker Jeff House from Jeff House Livestock and he's presenting maintaining production in the cattle industry regardless of the season. So make sure to register your virtual chair today and join us this Thursday for that one. Um, and just a reminder that our offices are currently closed. Um, we are available by appointment only in a face-to-face -face situation. Um, however, we're always available um, at, at the displayed phone numbers. So contact your local office at any time if you've got any questions or if you require any assistance. Um, so that's it from me. And I will just stay live for a little bit longer for any other questions and then I will end the video. Um, so Jean's put a question in, what if I lease the property? So if you lease the property and therefore are the legal occupier on the 30th of June, you are required to complete that land and stock return for that property. Um, if our records aren't showing that you're the leasee of that property, you need to get in contact with us for us to work out the best way for us to have that property reflected in our system. Um, so, yeah, get in contact with us if it's the owner's name or an old leasee's name or something like that on the return and we will work that one out for you. Um, so that one might um, be the end for me today. So please don't hesitate to contact us for any questions and let us know how we can help. Um, and we'd always be more than happy to. So thanks again for tuning in, guys, and we will be in contact with you all later.